Thanks for listening. This is Ralph and Vicky's Off Grid Podcast with your host, Pete Rogers. This is podcast number one. And today we're talking about the history of Vicky and I and Archer's Choice Media. This segment of the Off Grid Podcast is brought to you by Hoyt. Welcome to Off Grid with Ralph and Vicki, a podcast dedicated to hunting, archery, and living the outdoor lifestyle. I'm your host, Pete Rogers, and this is podcast number one. Yeah, can you believe it? This one. is crazy. This is a new adventure for it us. It is. We're excited. It is. It's easy for you, Vic, because it's talking. I do enjoy talking. It's just something that I do well. But Pete's in charge. He's oh. our host. So, oh, he's so actually, we can't say anything. We can't talk unless Pete asks us. Okay. Ready? That's we'll pretty see scary. how long that lasts. Uh, it's not going to last long at all. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about how Archer's Choice Media came into existence. Okay. How, okay. Did, it, how did it come to being? So with that, uh, where did you start? I mean, where did Archer's Choice start? So, I mean, is this... Let's go to your to your uh, archery Before shop. TV, this yeah, is yeah your archery shop. Okay, yep. Um, I actually, you know, I, I I worked for a bunch of archery shops growing up, um, and my my goal or my dream was to have my own shop. So at twenty, you know, I really seriously started thinking about it. You know, in my early twenties, um, and made it thanks to mom and dad. You know, just loaning me loaning me like a few thousand bucks because that's all i had <laughs> that's all i could afford to do um but uh you know started it when i was 23. okay in the suburbs of chicago in berwin Berlin, on Cermak road um okay my dad thought i was whacked he really did just because he's like you you know he goes just work stay working in an archery shop you know what i mean he goes no i think he wanted you in heating and air conditioning. oh no he definitely wanted me in a trade <laughs> yeah you know an yeah. italian from chicago he wanted me in a trade yeah but um yeah, man it wasn't there so how are you gonna make a living uh oh. in an archery shop oh yeah he goes right. there's no ar- there's no bow hunters here you, you know what I mean? especially and, in the 80s yeah Yep. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we were very fortunate, very fortunate. I had a, a friend of mine, Louis Bruchinelli, uh, you know, and, and he actually, he came on board right, right at the beginning to, tr- you know, just see, see, get the help things going. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, you know, it was, it, it, it was, is crazy, you know, I mean, I mean. So how did you move from there into filming? I mean, where's the segue for okay. that? Okay, um, so so that was uh, eighty. You op- yeah, you opened the shop in eighty four. Eighty four. But you started filming. No, yeah. Well, well, we well, what happened? What you're right in in eighty four. Um, and what what happened was the shop got it got crazy. I mean, it got so popular so fast. Um, and you know, I, I mean, I think for any any type of business if you have a passion for it it's easy right. to, to 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 you know allow it to grow or to get yeah. it to grow yeah. if people see that you're doing it for the right reasons um and that's what happened well lo and behold had a friend about you know, or, or a gentleman come in and his name was spence petros he used to be the editor for fishing facts magazine i remember that one yep yeah. yep and and spence uh wanted to get into bow hunting Okay. And he said, he, you know, he comes in and big old Greek guy, you know, you know what I mean? And here I am an Italian. So we, we hit it off right off the bat, you know, just having fun with each other. And, um, but you gotta be careful when you're in the room with them. Cause they both use their hands when they talk. And well, you hit a lot. Like, yeah. You got to duck a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to duck a lot. It's dangerous. Yeah. And we, uh, you know, he, he was already well involved. I mean, that was his career editing, you know, an editor for a very popular magazine. He was writing for all the other magazines. Uh, he was doing TV. Um, and he brought in, you know, um, you know, other people and he brought in a gentleman, John Hussar. 
Now, this is back when the only thing like this on television were fishing shows. Yes, sir. Virgil Ward, Bill Dance, yep. Jimmy Houston, Winkleman. Babe Winkleman. Yep. There were not any. Uh, well, Kurt Gowdy may have had the American sports. Yeah, the yeah. American sports, but for sure, because that's how I grew up. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, watching Fred Bear. And, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. and seeing the old films, you know, yeah. Ben Pearson, Howard Hill, and all them. Oh, yeah. And, and I saw them, and I, I was, they captivated my soul. I that mean, wasn't was, on television. Those no, were just sir. real, yeah. real. Yeah. That was, yeah. I think right. 16 millimeter film or yeah. something like that. Yeah. You know, but, but uh, you know, Spence brought everybody in and, and got, got us going right away. And uh, Babe's crew came out and filmed, you know, and, and it was fun. You know, prior to that, you know, me opening the shop, I mean, I, that's all I did was bow hunt. I didn't come from a, a gun hunting background going into bow hunting. Right. I didn't, there was really didn't have a gun background. You know, it was all strictly bow hunting. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, come into that, going from bow hunting to the, to the filming was pretty cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? I bet so. And at that time there were just some people just starting to do a little bit of actually, you know, actual hunting videos. Right. Um, right. So, you know, me, I jump in it full force. So you were outfitting by now. Uh, no, no, we were, we were, we, we started that, um, so the yeah, film, well, so when did they start filming? Yeah. No, Winkleman's crew came that's with right. That's Colorado. right. Yeah, he, he was outfitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. outfitting. He had an elk camp. He was yeah, outfitting elk, as the a bear guy. camp yeah. up north. Yep. And, and that's right. He came. The, his crew came out. Babe Winkleman's crew. Yep. Right. And it was funny because they had a, a big guy with a big old beta camera, thing yeah. like seventy pounds. And then he had. Then there was a sound guy. And you know, I think they were used to film and fishing shows. So they were in a boat, so they didn't have to Rather walk than around hiking with it. up and down yeah. mountains yeah. and and. Uh, you know, and then I, you know, we, st I started taking them, you know, they started following me hunting and we're hiking up and down mountains. And next thing you know, we lost the sound guy, you know what I mean? And the camera <laughs> literally, guy. literally, he yeah, just kind of no. hung back. He yeah. Fell out. yeah. And then, yeah. and then the camera guy with 70 pounds of camera or eight, probably more than that. You know what I mean? And, and so we, we ended up, I said, guys, listen, if you stay here, I, 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 I saw a good buck. Wet, I put him to bed and I went around the mountain and I come up over and, and they filmed it from far off. Okay. And from the opposite side. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, yeah. so, and it worked out really well. And, uh, you know, I was very fortunate that like in a couple of days I ended up filling, you know, filling a few tags. So they, they got all their footage. They took it back to babe and his production team. And, you know, they were like, Oh my gosh. So next thing you know, babe's coming down and we're teaching them how to shoot on the range and okay. they're filming all that and Spence. And then John Hussar from the Chicago Tribune. Then we start having just Chicago bears coming in. We have the, the Cubs, Keith Moreland, Jody Davis, Brian Dayette. I mean, Davey yeah. Martinez, Carlton Fisk and Phil Clawson, physical, you know, the physical strength trainer for the Sox. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Yep. And he starts bringing more people. And then Bo Jackson Bo shows Jackson up. Bo Jackson shows up. And I mean, I mean, it just grew. So he shows up at your archery shop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Kurt Russell. Like, when Kurt, you and know, they're like, and, teach me to shoot a bow. Well, no, he, he Bo, knew. Re Bo already knew. Yeah. He just needed yeah. a place to shoot. Him, him and Walter, Walter Payton, were probably two of the most gifted human beings I've ever met in my life that could grab a bow and truly shoot it pure instinctive. Like they've shot that particular bow their whole life. Yeah. I just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Their, their uncanny ability. Well, there's been a lot of documentation on their just natural <laughs> athletic yeah. ability. I, I, I hung with them just hoping that some of it would rub off. But <laughs> it didn't. Yeah. No. I, it, oh, it, thanks, it, Vic. It, oh, thanks sorry. for the support. So you still run a six minute 40. <laughs> <laughs> How about like eight minutes? Eight, eight, eight minutes and forty. Okay. It depends, you know, if I run out of gas with the Yamaha or something. Like that. <laughs> That's right. That's nice. right. But uh, yeah, no. So I mean, it, it, things worked out. You, yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah. and and Jody, Jody Davis, Keith Moreland, Brian Dett, we started actually doing some more filming together. Okay. Um, Walter. Now you you're know, filming I, hunts. Yes. Now. Yep. Okay. And 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 Walter Payton and I did did one. You know, like our first video, the year he retired, we went. I took him up to Quebec. I had, I had been there. Okay. You know, we hunted caribou. He loved it, and and I mean, it was just it it was really cool, and it was at a, it was at a time that perfect timing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just right just, place, right time. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then. 
because of your work ethic, this this shop started to grow, started getting more recognition, and then people started seeing it, and then they and then you just branched into filming, kind yeah. of a, as a natural progression of the time. Yeah, and I had my hunting camps, so I, I you know I always when I opened when I opened the shop, okay. my goal was that if someone walked through the door, because they're doing me a favor by coming into the shop, not me opening the shop. You, you, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and I wanted that when they came in, that they could get everything they possibly could dream of. They could get set up they could, with a bow. They could get be taught how to shoot. Okay. They could find out and book hunts. We had taxidermists that were working with us. They could get their animals mounted. We had a butcher shop that would help them get you. So, yeah. so everything like a under one stop shop under one. Yeah. Period. So you had period. the bow set up so you could yep. sell them the bow, tune it, Teach get them. everything yep. ready, do instruction on the indoor range there. Yep. Yep. Sell them the, the, the arrows, flesh the arrows, broadheads, everything releases, right. stabilizers, the oh, whole thing. works. Everything. And then they say, all right, I'm tired of shooting paper and targets. I want to go hunting. How do I do that. And here's our trips. What I would do, you know, I had different camps, the elk camps out west, mule deer, no, black bear. Let's Calvin be specific. Canada. Where were your elk camps? In Colorado. Okay. You Northwestern, I mean? North Central. Pretty central. You, okay. you know what I mean? And, uh, you, you know, and what we had, we, we had posters. Okay. And I, I, I made it very affordable. Instead of it costing them thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, a lot of these hunts were a thousand bucks or something like that. Yeah. So, it, it, and I mean, the whole... But then you had deer camps also. Yep, in Wisconsin. Okay. Yep, and and I mean, and a bear camp up in Ontario. Yeah, and, a bear camp and the whole Ontario. basis was, if I can get them to go hunting, they're going to buy more product, they're, and they're going to be happier. Plus, plus, not only that, you're promoting hunting. Absolutely. I mean, that's so, what this is about. So, on one hand, you're promoting shooting archery equipment, shooting bows, but then that leads them to hunting with bows, right? And not just hunting. In Chicago suburbia or in Illinois, but right. also hunting big game in other parts of yeah, the world. Yeah, branch yep. out, sure. Yeah. No. You know, I didn't. I wasn't a hunting consultant. I went out and I ran the camps. You know what I mean? Right. Because that's what I loved. And and I, you know, as I grew, I actually grew away from the shop. But the shop was still running. The shop was still running. Yeah. Yep. You know, and 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 you know my. I'm going to use a big word, my aspirations that, yeah, that's a big one for me. But, you know, you know I mean, I, I wanted, I didn't want four walls around me. I never have. He still does not want four walls around him. Yeah. You can tell when he's in the office. I hate it. I've seen that a little you've, bit. I've you've been seen here. a little it. bit of that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you got to be out there and you want to experience the hunt. Yeah. He'd rather Which be is, hanging in tree stands and checking tarot cameras than being in the office yeah. and getting paperwork. Which is an important part of what this whole podcast is about. It's not just about hunting. It's not right. just about archery, but it's about living the outdoor lifestyle. Well, yeah. yeah absolutely. It's about carrying on um, more than just going out and pursuing animals. Which is a big part right, of it. Right. But it's about everything that that involves. Well, anybody, yeah. anyone, if they have the time, can go out and pursue animals. They, right. You know, they, they, they can hunt animals. On weekends. You, you know what I mean? They can. You, you know, we, we've always been dedicated to living it 24-7. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that, you know, know us from, you know, the, the, maybe the shows or something. Mm -hmm. you, th th they see that part of it and they think that's all you do. Right. Yeah, we just hunt for a living. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, we don't no. have Archer's Choice Media, the production company that has two... A few, a few employees, a, a, a few you, you know what I mean? And, you know, full-time employees that you got to make sure you paying salaries. Yep. And, and has produced over 400 and, episodes on yeah, Outdoor has, Channel yeah, and hundreds a, of thousands of DVDs. Absolutely, and the amount and, of content that we have coming into this building and what we got to do with that content. Right. We're blessed. We're able to, able to go out and enjoy this lifestyle and be yep. able out in the woods and stuff like that. But we're still working at it to be able to do that. Right. And we're not complaining. No. I mean, sure. we're not complaining at all. Yeah. I mean, this is what, you know, it, I was asked on an interview years ago, you know, what, what was your business plan? Pete, I'm telling you, I didn't have one, man. I, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to hunt. You yeah. know, I, I wanted to be outside. Yeah. And I wanted to do the majority of it with bone arrow. Yeah. I loved it. 
and you saw something that you wanted to hunt, like a specific animal you wanted to hunt, and you said, how can I figure out how to go hunt elk? So you did some research, and you said, I'm going to go hunt elk in Colorado. So I called game wardens. I called, you know, called the, the divisions of wildlife, and, and I talked to them, and I'd write letters. This was before email. I mean, now I'm showing my age. But did you I, have to send stone? No, I didn't have to send stone. Oh, okay, just, you know, like maybe You had to mail it and then yeah. wait for a response yeah. six yeah. weeks no, later. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And so, most times you didn't get one. Wait, did they ever send, like, a beep, a pager note to you so that it would beep, 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 beep on your pocket or something? No? Okay, sorry. <laughs> this is my floor. <laughs> no, was, actually, this yeah. is our beginning oh, episode. This is okay. Okay. Beginning. Yeah. Just Everyone's going to see how it really yeah. is. Yeah, it's we're going to talk about Ralph later and yeah, then we'll talk Ralph, about Vicky later. Yeah, Ralph, show. Okay. But right now, this is Archer's Choice Media. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This came is everyday to be. life here. This is how our life yeah. is. Yeah. Yes, the mental anguish that I go through. <laughs> So at, at uh, so you started filming, and I guess you started just doing instructional DVDs. Uh, no, we VHS. did the, we, we did hunting. Okay. You know, we did the hunting like the caribou epic and some others, and then then we I, you know I, I could see the trend in the marketplace mm -hmm. and video cost or video pricing was starting to decline. Okay. So what I did is that you know. I'd, I sat down and I <coughs> strategized a little bit and came up with a series called Simple Solutions. And they were individual solutions for like mule deer, for black bear, for elk, for me, okay. because I had experienced, you know, that's what I've done all this time. Okay, so your first video was? Caribou Epic with okay. Walter and I, Walter, Bob, Folkrod, and myself. Okay. Um, you know, and, and I mean, it was it was cool. It was fun. And, and that was a full length video, 60 yes. minutes? Or... Oh, I think it was longer than that. I can't tell you exactly, Pete. Now, I'm that trying to remember way back ago. then what the standard it, video it was, was like, uh, 60, 60 it, to, eight, to 90 minutes. I think, to 90. Yeah, I think it was closer to 90 minutes. Yeah. I think most yeah. of yours were like between 75 and 90 minutes. Yes. You know, and even back then, my the vision that I had for videos actually is portrayed on the shows, too. And, and that is, it, it's more of not just the hunt. Right. You know what I mean? It's the camaraderie. It's the, yeah. the you know, the ups and the and the downs of hunting and, yeah. you know, and sharing camp with, with getting to camp, life oh, and yeah. camp. Yeah. 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 I mean? and yeah. It's the whole lifestyle of it. And, and that's what we've always based our, you know, everything on yeah. just because I, I think, you know, sometimes some may overemphasize just the kill. Yeah. And they lose they lo they lose a, a whole lot. They do. In the entire adventure. I mean, you, you know, it's funny because we, 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 we make we try to make look how serious we are. Mm -hmm. But I've never been. And yet I, I you know, Vicky, I think will admit it. And I'm going to ask you, have you ever been to a deer camp that everyone's not laughing that they're not having I jokes. I wouldn't go and, back if no. I had, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. So, so yeah. why would you continue hunting? If exactly. That's what you were doing? So yeah. we wanted, we've always wanted to show that yeah. and it didn't matter where, I mean, listen, we've been on hunts. Heck, we just got done with a few that just, they didn't go the way we wanted. Yeah. However, you got, you got to pick your chin up and you got to laugh and you got to say, Hey, uh, what, you know, and, but well, it's hard. Well, if you go on a hunt and it's strictly about the kill, <laughs> It's not fun at all. No. Right. It's not fun. It's so much stress and pressure of trying to kill, 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 as opposed to enjoying the experience. And I tell people that all the time, just from my angle, is I hunt for the experience. Killing something is a bonus. We'll be right back with more of Ralph and Vicki's Off Grid Podcast with your host, Pete Rogers. Welcome back to Ralph and Vicky's Off Grid Podcast with your host, Pete Rogers. Now let's get back to the show. Now, don't get us wrong. We'd be lying if we said we don't want to get something. Absolutely. Because I mean, we who need wants to go in the freezer. Yeah. Right. You know, we need food for the fall. <laughs> and you want winters. bragging rights. Yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah. the reality of it. Oh, yeah, you want to say, know. oh, check what I got. Yeah. But, but truly, truly, is if that's all you're doing it for, you're doing it for the wrong When you're reason. missing a lot of yes, it, too. Absolutely. You're missing a lot, if yeah. that's the only reason you're right. doing it. So, all right, so then you went to the how-to videos. Yep. And, and you know, 
And the, you the reason it. I went through them is is because I was exper- I had no money. So I'd have, you know, I went on pu- public land and I was learning how to do things. Didn't have the internet, didn't have anything access, yeah. you know, accessible yeah. like that. So man, you, you learned, you learned the hard way. And I, I mean, you know, I, your simple solutions. Yes. Yeah, simple solutions. And these were VHSs in the late eighties. Yeah. They 80s were and nine, early nineties. Early nineties. And <laughs> they were like 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They were short. And they were like 10 bucks. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, you know, they, they sold well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, that led into, um, Vicky, you know, get c- coming into the shop. Uh, she bought a bowl. He didn't give me a discount. Why should I? Well, you were, you were with an ex-boyfriend. You didn't blink fast enough. No. It like wouldn't have worked. <laughs> you didn't smile big and, enough. And I, I will admit, you know, I did, I did check out what, what she was driving and she was driving a Toyota pickup. So I was like, Oh boy, maybe I should give her like a 5% discount. He regular didn't. Cab, I didn't. He, drive. didn't. He didn't. It was four wheel drive. Regular cab, regular yeah. cab, four wheel yeah. drive. Stick. It was an 87. Toyota oh, brand spanking new silver with those. the big decal on there. <laughs> the thing. Yeah, oh yeah. Those. Oh yeah, no discount, nothing like that whatsoever. No. You know, that's they still how it goes. They had manual steering back then too, didn't um, they? Sti- Rack and it pinion, was wasn't it? Rack and pinion, five speed. <laughs> I think it's absolutely. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Both I loved arms my truck, but a top boy my whole life, and that was the first new vehicle. I, I worked my butt off, put myself through some community college, and bought my first truck. That's cool. That was it. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So that was in the late eighties. Yep. Eighty seven. Yep. It was eighty seven. Yeah, because I bought my first bow, and which was at your shop. Yep. In 87. What kind of bow was it? It was a Pearson probe. Pearson probe. Mm-hmm. Yep. My first bow was a Ben Pearson. I still have it. Yep. I don't have mine. Ralph sells all my bows. I, gives, I really all my we, bows we give them away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like landowners or, or kids or so, you know what I mean? Yeah. Most most of it, it's not adults that fit in her, her and my draw lens. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, 27 inch thing. Yeah. Does it. Yeah. Not but, very many uh, guys. <laughs> no, you know, you, you always have to pass it on. And that's what we've always tried to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. But yeah, so then I kind of showed up on the scene. And um, with a boyfriend, yeah, but then the yeah. boyfriend was gone, yeah, yeah, and then he had Ralph actually had me. Um, I had signed up for one of his deer camps, he had a ladies only deer camp. How so, smart is that, Pete? That's in good. Wisconsin, you know what I mean, I had an all ladies and, deer camp and I back had in the 90s when, bad buddy, when women now, wasn't hunting. I was yeah. smart, yeah, yeah, it was gosh, it was probably 90. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. It yeah, it had to be. It, it was probably it had about to be, 19, yeah. it was 1990. Probably about yeah, because we got married in 93. So how many women came to these camps? Oh, I, six. <coughs> something After like none. Six or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that idea was shot to hell. You know what I mean? It was like, uh, boom, yeah. out the door. That, okay, but. Uh, I, so, yeah, no, so we, uh, I signed up for a deer camp. And long story short, one way or another, um, he ended up having his mom call me. Okay. No, no, wait, no, He's you're not offensive before I even say absolutely because you're no, setting no. it up to make it sound like it, it what it wasn't. It wasn't okay. okay. You're you signed up for the deer, <laughs> she signed up for the deer camp, okay. and on there they put their phone numbers. She, you, you know, what I mean, yeah. yeah. And I had found out, you know, that her and her boyfriend broke up, so and he ran down the mountain. And I didn't run mom. down the mountain and I called his mom, he was in elk hunt camp. I felt that it was improper to. To call her, you take, you know, use her number that she wrote for the deer hunt. Yeah. And call her to ask her, you know, out to dinner. So what I did is hey, by his this mom time. mom called me up and asked me out for dinner. You know, my mom was at the <laughs> shop now. She was working, you know. So she was out. running the shop while you were at that. Yeah. Well, we had, yeah, we had bear. We had, we had, yeah, we had, we had a bunch of, you know, people there, bunch which, yeah, which that. worked out well. But, um, so, so I, I didn't think that was proper. You know what I mean? Now, I mean, so I had her ask, call, and ask if I could call her. And ask me out for dinner. So you were just being a gentleman. Yeah, but see, it, she never turns it that. She turns it around. So, like, I but climbed up, we I ran really off the we were really good mountain. friends before that time anyway, so it was kind of... It was different. He, he, his... Right? Friend, is it, I, Pete? Come on. It's ma, different. Ma, ma, back ma, me up. Ma, ma called it me up, and she different. said, I was Southern just Southern gentleman, right? Would, I mean, would etiquette. It be okay? We talk about etiquette. Yeah. Would it be I'm okay over her. if I'm Ralph calls you up and asks you out for dinner? Yeah, it was blatant of chivalry thank you yeah and would it be appropriate if i asked you out for and dinner I, I can tell you right now 
If it was pouring rain, would I throw my coat out for an owl? Hell no. Because <laughs> she would push me in and walk right over my back. I would not. I would not. I would put my foot Chivalry down so you could step on my foot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so Vicky comes in. Yep. And, and all the, hell broke loose. And yeah, and then it got crazy. Yeah. Weird things it was, it was. No. <laughs> what was really awesome was... Um, <laughs> We're going to get to Vicky's story in a later podcast. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yes, this yes, was really yes. cool. It was right. um, PSC, Pete Shepley. Oh, yeah. Pete and, and uh, the the guys, they had this thing, and they they had, like, woman bow hunter of the year, you know, male bow, man, male bow hunter of the year. And, mm-hmm. and I always thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool to get a woman that, you know, get, get a girl, mm-hmm. get a wife that would bow hunt? You know what I mean? That's what was my dream. You're right. Then right. and you know, get her to be like that female bull hunter of the year. Yeah. You, you know what yeah, I mean? I so I fulfilled and, your dreams. <laughs> need to cut some of this out because this is not gonna be good. I think that's what I just heard. No, 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 no. no. I, did I say not that? quite. Okay, no, stop defending you. him. No, thank you, Kate. <laughs> the, the, this podcast is gonna go a long way, you and I together, brother. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna leave now. So so did you make Bow Hunter of the Year? No. Well then no, you didn't fulfill they ended, the dream. They ended, exactly. Yeah, they ended that. You know what I mean? But but what you know Oh, I see, because Vicky was gonna win it two more oh, years yeah, in a row. Oh right my gosh. So yeah. So, so we started doing, you know, the, the video slash, you know, now the, starting in DVDs and there were no couples doing anything like that. Right. You, um, you kind of skipped over that little part where I was a typesetter and because I actually could use a computer way back in the day when it was mainframe computer. Do you remember when you took me into He's, your... He shows, he comes to my office one day at the newspaper. I worked at a daily newspaper and I typeset ads. That's what I did. Okay. Input information on a big giant screen that was all lines. It all wasn't DOS computer. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah big crazy. old system, but we had a brand new Macintosh. And the screen was the screen like was that this big. big. It was <laughs> tiny. <laughs> and they were just starting yeah. to start doing ads on that. And we could do color um we could um do color sheets off of it for the press. Yeah. So they could print up color photos and stuff like that through it, color separations. And he he came to my office one day. I had to work was that on, was it on a Saturday or something that we went in there and he thought that was the coolest thing and because I knew how to work on a computer she could edit I became an editor because I like was that. editing with decks you know what I mean dual decks yes and, yep and then so, so all I was sudden, like I am now an editor different yes oh, yeah. source A source B yeah. source C yes. master yeah he had all that going on the big soundboard the big everything going but on but you could edit on the computer I can edit on a computer yeah I know well, how she to work should on be a able computer. to Right? Which yes. I did. If she knew how to turn on a computer, she should know how to do that. I so thought. actually, some of the Simple Solutions series, that was where I started kind of coming in there was during that point. Yep. And so I started editing some of those and then all the rest of the videos. So for she a became long time. an employee. Yep. Yeah, but I didn't have to pay her. We but weren't married. I took her to dinner. Before you started dating, she was an employee? No. No. Oh, no. 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 I was, you know, I was casting the net. Slow, oh you know, very gosh. strategic. You know how that goes. He's like, okay, so he started with the goldfish. Oh, oh, yeah. Not you know, a big cast. I threw out yeah. the little minnow. You know what I mean? And yeah. she was like, oh, oh so excited. Oh, I get to edit oh, these yeah. things for Ralph. It no, was, it oh, wasn't like it that was, at it was, all. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It was horrible, Pete, you know, but I took one for the team, man. I you know what I mean? I do. Yeah. I oh, it was hard. my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah. But, oh. So, that's how I actually became an editor. So okay. I actually edited, gosh, all of our first bear videos, yeah. the deer videos. So y'all started hunting together before you got married? We, on well, video? Yeah, I, I, went on on, video? I went on the lady only hunt. Okay. And he was filming me. I had, that was actually my first hunt that had ever gone Big on. game. Big game hunt. Was it, yeah, because turkeys and you, some, yep, some you grouse were doing, hunting yep. and stuff. Hey, but, in South Carolina, turkey's considered big game. Okay, well. Isn't that sad? You have to have a big game license to hunt turkey in South Carolina. Um... Well, you need a hunting license everywhere else, pretty much. Yeah. You have to have they a hunting actually... license and a big game permit oh. to hunt turkey. We don't even have big game permits here in no. Illinois. We have deer permits and turkey permits. Yeah. We have turkey, bear, and deer. Yes, yeah, so we have, have bear. Huh. Yeah. That's uh, kind of crazy. I think we're the only state where turkey is considered a big game. Really? It's kind of funny. Well, we don't have a lot to choose from in South Carolina. But you, we, we, don't, we do. We don't, but we don't have bear. But we're digressing. We are digressing. So anyways, <laughs> so yeah, so my first hunt, big game, my first deer hunt was actually on the woman's only hunt. Okay. And um, I didn't get anything. 
I we, filmed her. But, I charmed her. You know but, what I mean? You we, know? I she don't, she don't talk about that. But I you didn't were get filming anything her because yeah, was, yeah, he was filming. And um, so technically almost every single time I've ever hunted, not every time, but most of my hunting has been filmed. filmed. Wow. So your yeah. very first big game hunt was filmed. Yeah. There wasn't any footage because we sat in the stand and laughed and giggled the entire time. Yeah. Well, he was flirting. Now, I, there was camp. another time. Now, wait a minute. I remember that now they see. Now you're giving me oh, ammunition. Perfect morning. Frost on the ground. Oh. Just everything. <laughs> I had this set up. It was going to be a killer. I think we might have been married at this point. Were we? It's in Wisconsin. Yeah. And she looks at me 730 in the morning and looks at me and goes. You, you know what? They can't hear that on a podcast. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's going. <laughs> I'm cold. I want to get down. Oh, so she you, wasn't you, pointing at a deer down there. No, she no. was cold. I yeah. was cold. I was ready to go. At right. seven thirty. I'm, I'm like, it was cold. What the hell? But it's seven thirty. It was yes. cold. Yes, it's prime, prime time. November. <laughs> yeah, things are happening. I was cold. I was out of there. I'm done. And, and then <laughs> I'll tell you, all kidding aside, I mean, we we didn't have the right gear yeah. you, you know what i mean we back then I had you, all your you, hand-me-downs yes they didn't make anything for no they didn't have anything for women they were in cotton long johns oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. remember oh. the white thermals oh, yeah. and then you then you put plastic bags someone told you put plastic you put plastic bags you put your feet in plastic bags so they say dry warmer. but it sweat. They sweat <laughs> like crazy <laughs> they spread, yeah, and they, they, sweated, freeze. they made them cold <laughs> they freeze like but we did okay. it all but <laughs> we're digressing again yes. let's go back to archer's choice media okay okay so anyway so we started producing i started editing the videos he'd yep. sit next to me we were doing the videos together we came out with our baron down with beamons our first yep. bear tape we came out with super safari so baron down season? was your first one remember season, season 99, 99 all yeah, kinds but that was after safari yeah. ones yeah. um i think the now the safari the, was your honeymoon video uh, yeah right? yep. super safari was our honeymoon video and we actually wanted to do that you know africa was attainable um it wasn't as popular as it, it late, you know what I mean? As yeah, as well, it, people wasn't going to Africa. No, then. no. And, and they and certainly wasn't doing videos on it. So, so we wanted to do it, and we did it with in the flavor, of, you know, of like more in your face. If if you ever saw it, I mean, we did some black and white. Remember? I mean, we did it. it we was, made it fun. Yeah, we made it entertaining. And, and I think I want to say Baron Down with Beamons and Super Safari. They both came out like ninety four or ninety five. I don't, I don't, I, I listen, I, you like can't right quote around me on numbers for years because I can't tell you. Yeah. I really well, can't. Well, we yeah. came out with them. I think it was right around there. And then we kept, we went from, those are still VHS. And then finally they started switching over to DVD. And so has we Super Safari been converted to DVD? No, we no. never converted it. No. Baron, Baron Down with Beamons is because we made a three- Three dish, part, three yeah. Three that bearing down with Beamons and then bearing But that market's going, Pete. You know what I mean? It's, it's you know, people, if they want to watch something- TV. We you know, need to get it to be downloadable is what we need. To yeah. Do. That's, yeah. That's what we need to do. We need to make it a download. Yeah. You know. and, I agree. and so now you're hearing that right now. We're going to, we'll, we'll eventually make we all will the do that. It'll be on our list of things to do. Another one would be a greatest hunts of your career. Put all those together. That the videos were just starting to kind of switch over to DVDs. They were yeah. just kind of getting there. We came out with our season 99 tape. And that was about the time, because it was 99, when we were in hunting camp with Phil Phillips. Yep. And we were animal <clears throat> hunting. And, um, Him and Jess Motes. Yep. We were sitting there, we're talking, and they're like, you know, you guys, you guys do these seminars, you do all the stuff, you have a website, you're, you're producing these hunting videos and starting to do the DVD side of things. Have you guys thought about going the outdoor channel and doing kind of something that direction? Doing a TV show. And we're like, no. Why would we do a TV show? How strange is that? Why would yeah. you want to be on TV? It cost a lot of money. Yeah, it cost a lot on. of money. You know, and, and you then, had to do a, what, then it was 13 episodes they yes. required. Then yep. you're, you're required to do 13 right. shows. Yep. And then some of our manufacturers back in the day, Hoyt and Realtree and them, they were yeah. like, you know, you guys should really think about doing this outdoor channel thing. Yeah. And we're like... Are you kidding? And they're like, no, you know, with what you, know, you guys got going on, we should do that. So we, we <clears throat> produced a pilot mm -hmm. in 99. At the end of 99, we produced a pilot. And sent it and in. And sent it in. And we got a, yeah, let's get it going. Oh, yeah. I'm, For curious, sure. I'm curious as to what were you hunting in your pilot? 
Was it whitetail, elk, bears, or was it a combination? That's a really good question. That's a really good question. Pete, you're asking questions again that we can't answer. <laughs> That's what did I'm here for. Did we get a list of questions? Did we get a list of questions before we yeah, do this? So um, we know what you're going to ask us. Well, see, because I'm just Joe Public. I'm just asking you're questions. You're like, wait a second. I think people would want to know. I mean, oh, wow. I can tell you it was probably a collage. It was it a collage. It was a collage. Her and I doing what we did. Do and, what we do. And showing our personality. Yeah. Well, because one of the things that I think makes Ralph and Vicky unique unique um, as a longtime fan is that there are people who specialize in whitetail. Mm -hmm. There are people who specialize in turkeys, people who do big game only, but y'all do a little bit of all of it. I mean, I remember the first, when I got a chance to go moose hunting in 97, I was scavenging for moose videos because I had never seen a moose and I had a chance to go on a moose hunt in Alaska and I was like where can I find a video so I went to the VHS and I was looking for right to the rental store Mm -hmm. way back in the day Mm -hmm. and I was looking for anything and it was so rare to find something that was on moose or bear or, or elk or yeah, much less Africa. Yeah, more know. than likely, it probably was a combination of a couple different things yeah. that we put together. I bet you it was. We did a lot of green screen in the first year. Yeah, remember first that? Couple years, we would like do, the weather weather we shows. Would do, yeah, we yeah, did oh some really gosh. crazy things, but when we when when the Outdoor Channel accepted our our um, our. Uh, Pilot. 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 pilot, thank you. Yeah. I have to say promo. It's not a promo. Um, when they accepted our pilot, and then <clears throat> with everything else, they had to change within our office and everything like that. So then we had to change our company name from Archer's Choice Videos. To and media. instead of doing TV, we went to media, which is good because now we're doing podcasts. So. Well, and, and we also we produced a ton of commercials for the hunting industry. Yeah, well, we didn't want to pigeonhole ourselves. And now right. looking back, it was a really good thing we did it that way. Yeah. You know, because that's but, what we are. We're a media company. Right. Content driven. I mean, that's yeah. what you hear about all the time now. Yeah. Content well, it is. is king. It is. It is. And that's why we're doing this. And so how many years have you been on Outdoor Channel? Oh, 18. Eight to over 18 This is your 19th season? This we'll is be our going 18th into 19. season. We'll be going into 19. So 2019 will be your 19th yeah. season. Yes. And you have done... And 2020 how will be episodes? 20 years. How many episodes have you done? Over 400. We'll be right back with more of Ralph and Vicky's Off Grid Podcast. Your muzzleloader doesn't care. Doesn't care who's shooting it. Doesn't care about the rain. It doesn't care about the cold. It doesn't care if it's your first buck or one of your biggest. Holy cow. No matter who you are. No matter where you hunt. Traditions muzzleloaders with the new nitrite finish will outshoot, outperform, and outlast. Every time. When your accuracy is on the line. Your muzzleloader. Your muzzleloader. Your muzzleloader. Your muzzleloader is traditions. Welcome back to Ralph and Vicky's Off Grid Podcast with your host Pete Rogers. Well, I know we had there was a big, I know, a there big, was a big push giveaway. for your four hundred yeah, giveaway. I'm trying giveaway. to remember how many is going to be at the end of the season though. Four hundred and twenty twenty-five or no, so. No, I don't remember. No, this yeah, is you're because, asking numbers. That's because Pete, you have Archer's Choice and, and the, the choice. choice. Yes. So Archer's yeah, Choice Media both. Company, Archer's Choice right. Media, has the VHSs, DVDs. Archer's Choice television show and The Choice television show. Right. So when did The Choice come out? The Choice came out in 05. 05. And so, so why did you years. why did you go why did you do that one? Why did you add The Choice? I'll tell you why. We were known, we you know, we were very fortunate to be established and known as bow hunters. Right. Um and we saw we we also heard that a lot of people that were you know, the gun hunt Mm-hmm. wouldn't watch Archer's Choice because they don't bow hunt. They're just going to. And they just didn't want it. Yeah. That's right. They're not and opposed to bow hunting. They just no, don't they do just that. Don't no, they just it. They don't do it, so why watch it? Yeah. And what we felt, you know, we always wanted to share this lifestyle. And we thought, you know what? What if we show them and we teach them, just like we're going to learn, how to do the gun hunting stuff? Because it was new to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So so we wanted to share with everybody. So when you now now so that's that's interesting that you say that. Is you say the gun hunting is new to you. Yes, it is. When when most people oh, ab- yeah. start gun hunting and then say, you know, I want a different challenge. And so, they go to so they go to bow hunting. But we're you, the exact and, and now you started we say bow hunting and then you like, you know, let's try gun hunting. And now we say, like he said, you know, it's new to us. But we really can't say that anymore because the choice has been airing for 13 years now. Too. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, and on a personal note, I killed my first animal with a bow. My first big game animal with a Ben Pearson bow. The brackets on it. Remember yeah. those? Oh, yeah. The pulleys were like that big round yeah. inch and a half. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because I, my dad didn't grow up hunting. I didn't, you know, I mean, I picked it up on my own. And I couldn't afford a gun. So I started bow hunting because sure. I got a secondhand bow. And then it was nine or ten years later before I had a shotgun. And I killed a deer with a shotgun. Mm -hmm. And then many years after that before I went to rifle. So I kind of backed into it out of economic reasons and exposure reasons, you know. Yep. So I, mean, I, I think I, I think the experience that probably most of us had was you know your your Daisy Red Rider. Yep. You know what I mean? Your yep. little yep. your little BB gun. Yeah. And when there was a bird up on a wire, you shot, you oh. know, fifty times at it. You never hit it, you know what yeah. I mean? But and if you did, maybe it didn't do nothing. But you yeah. could see the BB miss oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the birds. <laughs> a little, little more left. A little more right. But that that's what we all experienced. Yeah. And then you'd you know you'd shoot the cans or you'd do yeah. this or you do that or or you try to bust a bottle. I, I mean and, and that was that was pretty much the extent of of you know my experience with guns it, yeah. yeah you know it was a bb gun maybe a pellet yeah. rifle um my, my dad wasn't a big hunter yeah you know but my mom on my yeah. mom's side her brothers all hunted yeah my grandmother knew how to cook everything you, you yeah. know what i mean so yeah. so it was it, you know that's where i ended up you know spending so, more so when you started the choice you started with rifles shotguns shot everything every yes we, we, we just jumped, jumped all in muzzle loaders jumped in. And, and and i'm a guy that I have to fidget. I have to, I have to, you know. He can't leave his Hoyt alone. Like once it's set up at shooting well, he's in there tinkering with it more. Yeah. It's the same thing when I got into the choice with, with whether we were using our muzzle loaders or yep. rifle or whatever it was. He was in there fidgeting because he wants to know every working part and what he can do to so make it better. So he tears it apart and then it tears it apart, again. builds it back back up. That's what he does. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you know, like you, we've been with Browning for, for a long time, you know what I mean? And I'll still talk to Rafe and ask Rafe a question, you know, on the X-Bolt or something like yeah. this. And I, I want to learn. Yeah. I, yeah. I just want to learn. And I want, I personally want to mount the scopes. Yeah. I, I want to do all this. I do, you, I do. And, yeah. and I screw up, man. I've yeah. screwed up. But, but if something goes wrong in the field, you, you want to know that you're the reason why I can fix it yeah. yep. or attempt to that, you know what right, I mean? Right. And, and we're still hunting. Yeah. That's always been the way with my, all, all of our bow hunting stuff. And it's also, so when you travel to hunt, you take like portable bro presses and all that kind of stuff to be Nobody, able to Nobody, but I know, I know how to press a bow down without a press. You know, okay. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But you, you, you know what I mean? Pure yeah. strength. You, you, you have to, you know, de decrease it all and, and everything else. But there, there's ways, there's tricks. Yeah. All right. So back to the choice. Yep. Um, so when you started the choice, you started with muzzleloaders, rifles, Shotguns, hunting the same archery. animals. We, we, crossbows. We had crossbows. We had everything you could imagine that you could basically hunt with is what we started we tried. the choice. We said, you know what? It doesn't matter with legal, what you want to hunt. If it's it. legal, do it. Enjoy yeah. yourself. Don't fight amongst each other because uh, you don't like that kind of a muzzle loader that you yeah. only like, you know, in line against traditional or, or, or how flint log versus. Flint, yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah. that was our big thing is like. That was our, our message. That we, was our message because part of what happened too before we had the choice was your mom. We had her. Um, yeah, she, remember that? She, she was hunting with a crossbow in and Africa. We, and we took her to Africa. Was that the one that was? Yep, we yeah. took her to Africa. And, and we had gotten hate mail because we had a crossbow on Archer's Choice. Really? Yes. Yep. We were actually, in, in some of the mail, it was told, they, they said, and we, we responded. Mm -hmm. We said, listen, her, her, you know, her age, her arthritis, she cannot shoot a bow anymore. Right. But we still, she, she still wants to hunt. So we're going to do anything in our power. To, to get her out there. To That's get her right. out there. Yeah. Some people said, well, it shouldn't then be she shouldn't hunt. Or it shouldn't be on Archer's Choice. And we're like, wow. We yeah. saw that and we said, you know what? We have we have this platform. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can help make a difference. Right. So what we did is, you know, we came yeah. up with the choice and we said, listen, doesn't matter with what because you Because it's your choice. That's right. That's right. That's and where the name came that's from. Legal, where you're doing And then it. after all, for years, you know, that choice stood. Then you saw a lot of other shows copied that format right. You, right you know what i mean right just like you know with the couples 
You so as long as it's so the driving thing behind the choice television show is as long as it's legal in your state or yeah. province or country. Yeah. Pro, yeah. As long as it's legal in your state, province or country. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, and it's ethical. Right. And you want to use that that do method, it. then do it. I do I, it. As long as it will get you out there. The slogan I wanted, but Vicky wouldn't let me. Oh no. Was you know, if 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 it is legal, yeah, shut up. Just go hunting. <laughs> yeah, she said, no, I that's really a wasn't little sure where he was yeah. going to go with yeah. that one. I was like, oh. But no, I mean, I mean, all we wanted, all we yeah. wanted to do, Pete, yeah. was get more people to understand this, this true lifestyle of right. what we love. It, right. And, and, and so you live because, it 24-7. Because there are some people who, you know, like I've told you before about muzzleloader and me, it's just not my thing. Yeah. I'm all yeah. for it. If yes. you want to do it, that's right. great. But, you know, it just doesn't appeal to me like it does to other people. Right. So, yep. But why would I say don't hold the muzzle order just because it doesn't appeal to me? You're but, right. But, you but some people but do. If it, that's but if the it's problem. your thing, man, go for it, do it, and have fun right. and, 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 and really enjoy it. Kind of like traditional bow hunters and compound hunters. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, I like both. I have I have long bows, recurves, and compounds. I like, I like all of it. But... <laughs> I'm not going to say you're wrong because you shoot a compound. No. And I want right. to hunt with a lot It's like baiting or non-baiting issues. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like ru- ha- hunting with dogs and not I hunting with dogs. I was going to say that. That's I a mean, big thing in the, South Carolina. Every, yeah. every aspect of what we do, there's, there, there, there's going to be a positive and a negative. Yeah format yeah. someone's gonna pick on yeah. it either way yeah. Yeah. I, I mean but the reality of it is mm-hmm. if we band together if we say listen you're my brother and my sister we we love this outdoor lifestyle right. yeah you know what our children's children will have the opportunity that's right. to live this same style that's right that's what we've always been about and that's it's right. it's never been about egos for us you know that yeah um, i mean and, it, and another thing that we that you would always mention also is you know when it comes to time for voting and politicians yeah. which we don't want to get political here no, no, we're not get political no. This, but. but at the same time what you need to understand is that when you have your inline and your flintlock muscle loaders and they're fighting over here and you have dog hunters and non-dog hunters and they're fighting yeah, over here no. and you have baiting and non-baiting and they're fighting over here yeah. and the politicians need numbers and they're like well i might get a few thousand here votes. i might get a few thousand there or i can go to this anti-hunting thing and i'm gonna get you know a million voters right right they're gonna ignore all of us hunters even though we're all hunting but we're fighting amongst ourselves we can't combine together and yeah. be one vote we're friends yeah. and yeah. that's what we need to do we need to realize guys you know what if we want to keep this for our grandkids and their grandkids, then we have, to, we just have get along. to get along. We have to get together just for that reason. Yeah. You know, like you said, you you know, you're not into the muzzle loading. Hey, that's great. You know, but you're not saying, ooh, don't do that. No, I still haunt the muzzle. Right. I just don't get the the full <laughs> excitement that other people do yeah, out of it. Right. But I support people during the primitive weapon season. I'm not complaining because I can't hunt because it's primitive weapon. Right. I say go, enjoy, have yeah. fun. Yeah. You know, use use your muzzle loader. You know, and whether it's inline or flintlock, I you know, Absolutely. again, if it's legal, it gets people into the field. It gets Simple, them a chance hunt. to enjoy. Just go yeah, enjoy just it and, and support those who may do it differently yeah, from so you. So that we're one group That's instead right. of so many fractions. So That's that we right. do get the right politicians where That's we need exactly them. That's exactly right. You know, so crossbow, longbow, vertical bow. Go for it. Whatever it, it now. is, just go whatever out and hunt. Is. Yep, yep. Yeah. So. Um, with the back with the choice, it's been going on since thirteen seasons. Thirteen seasons, yep, oh five. Thirteen seasons, wow, that's that's, that's a lot of episodes that y'all have is. to do, that's man. That's a lot. There's so, a lot. In, so really, from looking at it from uh, the layman's point of view, is you guys starting in? I guess where well, you hunt around the world now, so seasons are open all over. But right. let's just talk about North America for right now. So you have turkey season, turkey, bear season, bear. and then bull course, fishing. You can hog hunt year round. Yeah, so, hunt year round. And that's a big thing. I absolutely love hunting hogs. Yep. It's one of my favorite things. And they're so, good eating. And they're really good. They're eating. really good. They're eating. really yeah. good eating. Con- contrary to what people say, oh, big no, old boar are. hog is not. No, no. It's, just, they only stink on the outside. The meat still, yep. still the other white meat, right? Yep. Um, but then you have uh, hogs and alligators, and right, then yeah. as far as big game, and then uh, and then you're going into your normal fall seasons. Absolutely, so, most of, most of your August is your mountain hunts. 
okay. you know what I mean? Your sheep, your goats, and, and all that. And a lot of those seasons open up early. And the other thing with those seasons is it's a season. Yeah. So you can bow hunt. You can rifle hunt. Right. You can, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and a lot of times that, that opens it up an opportunity. Someone that saved, you know, for, for 10 years. Yeah. They're going on a big game hunt yeah. up north. And, yeah. and, you know, they have access to hunt let's say a mountain caribou yeah you hunt most of the you know you most of your hunt and you just couldn't get that opportunity with right. your bow you know it, you also have that opportunity you know to, to to take your rifle yeah and possibly reach out and touch something that yeah. you, you maybe wouldn't have been able to that's exactly right um, but you still had the whole entire hunt you had that adventure you, had the you lived that whole thing yeah and that experience is something you'll never forget that's exactly right that's exactly right and then you go into your elk you know what i mean our, our yeah. moose mm-hmm. you know and then and then you know and and how seasons are so liberal i mean think about it you can you can deer hunt Mm-hmm. When, when do you guys open up? Our deer hunt opens August 15th. There you oh go. Oh my goodness. It's got to be hotter than it is South Carolina miserable. August okay. 15th. Yeah. Oh my it is gosh. Miserable. No. Yeah. I'd be sitting there with like eight thermocells. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know what the bugs would be. Oh yeah. yeah. The mosquitoes have their own season. I yeah. mean, it's just. No. And how yeah. long does your season go? To January 1st. Okay. Wow. See, we open August or October 1st, 1st. and archery goes through January 15th. And yeah. the only time it's closed is during the two shotgun seasons. But actually, if you get a shotgun season tag, you can use your archery equipment. Now, our gun season in certain parts of the state opens August 15th. Your oh, gun wow. season? Gun season. And it goes wow. to January 1st. Oh, yeah. No, See, Illinois you know, only has two weekends for shotgun season, yeah. and one's a three-day and one's a four-day. You know, and for all our listeners, what's really cool there is today you have access to Google you know, or, or whatever it is, you could find out dates. So it's all the internet. S- internet. Okay. Yeah, search <laughs> but, engines too, but, yeah. But you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I Google it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but I mean, the thing is, is you can turn around and hurry up and find out. Yes, For example, right. if all yeah. of a sudden you, you never even thought there'd be a season and you know, you're getting off, you know, your boss said, Hey, we're, you know, we're going to shut down for yeah. two weeks. Yeah. You could turn around, do some research quick, and find that there's a hunting opportunity somewhere yeah. in North America. And what's, yeah. and, and what's interesting is, like, the, say, say Whitetail. Whitetail opens in Florida in, in uh, the end of July. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's early. Yeah. But they're already hard horned. They're already. It's some, crazy how. It really is. And then out west, blacktails open up in July. Latitude and yeah. longitude, how it changes yeah, it things. Does. And, it you does. know, it's, it's like we know a lot of people that follow the rut. Yep. You, you they know just what I mean? follow all around the country. Yep. Yeah. And yep. they, they schedule their season yeah. for one thing a white tailed deer hunting yep. the rut. Yeah. Yeah, and and like antelope opens in August. Yeah, out west, mm-hmm. and so does. Uh, yeah, but, it's t- but, every state's different. Yeah, but to your point is, is you can. Well, There's something available. Yeah. Well, hogs is year round everywhere. Right, predators, you know, predators. That's one of my favorite things. I really enjoy calling in animals. But uh, yeah, so um, and so we have so Archer's Media, Archer's Choice Media. And then you came into the choice in 2005, and it's still going on. So. Um, now we're adding the podcast, right? Yeah. With Off Grid with with Ralph and Vicky, um, and there's other things coming in the future. There well, you know, coming. we're adding Off Grid show, right. digital show. Yep, we're still in the works of getting that all lined yep. up, and you know, on a future podcast, when once we got that whole thing, yeah, figured then we'll out, announce it then. We'll announce it. We'll then. announce. Yeah. You know, make yeah. make the, and our social the, media pages. We've got course. RJ. We got RJ, RJ working on big working on stuff on, too. On yeah, show too. So oh, that's cool. So there, there's a lot of things that we're very excited about. A lot of um, things coming. And you you know what? TV's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. It isn't, but people are changing the way they view it. Right. And that you know they or they share it or they listen to it. Right. And you know we. Being trying to be innovators, mm-hmm. you, uh, you know, and and trying to 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 move forward, we're trying to do exactly that. Yeah. Well, Archer's Choice has always been on the cutting edge. I mean, you started in the '80s before anybody else did. The first couple in outdoor industry, which we'll talk more about when we do Vicky's story. Um, that you've always been the ones that have been innovative, have led the way, have broken down barriers for everybody else. And off-grid is, is another way to, to do that. 
you know, so. It's going to be a fun journey, buddy. It's going to be a fun journey. Have some fun. It's going to be a fun journey. So that pretty much wraps up this episode, episode one of Off Grid with Ralph and Vicki. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, so um, I guess pick us up next time and we'll see where we go from here. Heck yeah. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Yes. Off Grid. Off Grid. Off Grid. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. We hope you come back again for more of Ralph and Vicki's Off Grid Podcast with your host, Pete Rogers. 